the moment. I, I, cry, I cry tears of joy. Grand Rising, I cry tears of joy. Of the synchronicity of God. Mm. I, you would not have even known this, Queen. But when I came on and I heard Oprah talking about her favorite guest, and I already knew who she was, Terrorize. Mm -hmm. And that story of her wanting to be a teacher, mm -hmm. the passion she had for learning, never left her. It took her from one country to this country. It took her through a marriage. It took her through having children. It took her through so many different things. And what she did mm -hmm. was wrote her passion on a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. And put it in a tin and buried it. And buried it. Mm -hmm. You would not have known. These tens right here. These right here. Mm -hmm. I pulled them out so that I can use them for a presentation I'm making later on this month. You would not have known that. That I was going to ask the women to write down their deepest desires. Mm. Put them in these tins. And when you go home, bury them. Mm. I, you, I didn't call you. You didn't call me. You had no way of knowing it. I had no way of knowing. To affirm that this these tens right here, these terrorite tens, I call them terrorite tens. Mm. Can't even speak now. I just can't because the the glory of God is so perfect. The glory of God is so lovingly perfect. Mm -hmm. that we don't often know how God is working. We just don't. But we know God is working. Yeah. Minute by minute, moment by moment. Mm -hmm. We know that God will send you a message mm -hmm. to affirm your deepest desires, your, your most passionate passion. Yeah. So on this Passionate Friday, the spirit of synchronicity is on full effect, baby, because I'm telling you, <laughs> I pulled out these tears. I swear to God, you have no idea. You would not have known that. Oh, shame. Ooh. So if God can do something on that level, <laughs> mm -hmm. just imagine if you mm -hmm. could let go of the shit that don't serve you. Yeah. Woo. If you could release what's not working. Yes. And turn it over. Yes. Now you want to bury some stuff, bury that. <laughs> Yeah. Give it a funeral. I say. Thank you for how it served you up to this point because everything is purposeful. Yeah. Everything is purposeful. I'm sorry I had to blow my nose. That's okay. It's part of it. <laughs> Gotta let that shit go. Gotta let that <laughs> shit go, right, Mama Hat? <laughs> if we would let it go. Our passions and the and the 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 um, manifestation of them is being blocked by the bull, <clears throat> the BS that we hold on to. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm talking about the belief system, the belief system that we're not good enough. We're not important. We're not enough. We are not worthy. That's the BS I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And we hold on to it because we're afraid. Well, if I don't have this, then what do, do I have? How about you have some freedom? How about you can get some peace? How about you can let the joy flow? How about that? Mm -hmm. But we're so afraid. We're so afraid. And can I go into my reading? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not no, sorry. You're not I'm at not, all. I'm not sorry. You I'm not. Blessing. I'm not. I'm not. So today, today, the reading will say, if I open my heart and my mind to just be aware, as long as I am holding on to what I have, what I desire can't get in. Mm. Cannot get in. If someone has offended you, insulted you, disappointed you, or upset your apple cart, let it go. If someone has pushed your buttons, pulled your chain, or gotten on your last good nerve, let it go. If you are remembering all the ways you have been hurt or forgotten, betrayed or misunderstood, let it go. If you are thinking about all that you have lost, had stolen or given away, let it go. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what good does it do for me to hold on to this? If you are feeling lost or left, misunder, mistrusted or misguided, misunderstood or as if you've missed out, just let it go. If someone has lied to you or about you, if they act as if they have forgotten you or what they promised they would do, let it go. If you have been falsely accused or unjustly abused, let it go. If someone has set you up or let you down, let it go. Ask yourself, what harm am I causing by holding on to this? See, it's not bothering them. It's affecting you. Make a choice to let it go. Let go of the things or people that cause you grief or pain. You must choose to be pain-free and free of grief. You must choose to be more loving than the people involved in your experiences. You must choose to be open to receiving something better. You must choose to be self-sustained, self-contained, self-directed, and self-affirming. When you choose to let go, you are making room for new visions for yourself and of yourself that are more powerful than anything anyone could do or say to you or about you. Mm -hmm. You're making room for them, them passions to manifest. They can't get in because you're so full of BS. You are choosing to be upheld and upright in all the things that you know are true about you. Until today, you may have been holding on to what you, has caused you pain. But just for today, can we just start for today? Or how about in the next five minutes, we're going to let something go? <laughs> okay? Make a new choice. Mm -hmm. Choose to move beyond the things and people who have not honored the truth of who you are. Once you make that choice, the universe will give you something better. That's what Telluride did. That's what she did. She let go. She did not hear them saying that the, the boys need to be taught. The girls aren't worthy. The girls no need to have no education. She didn't listen to that BS. Mm -hmm. she didn't 
and created a life for herself that she could. She imagined it and she let her passion pull her forward. Yes. Let your passion pull you forward, but you gotta let go of the BS. Those belief systems that don't serve you. The belief system about yourself that says you're not enough, you're not good enough, you're not important, you're not worthy, you're undeserving. So right here, right now, I want you to take a deep breath, everybody. Ooh. And take another one just because you can. Ooh. And I want you to call to mind one thing, just one. I don't want the flood of things. I just want one. One thing that you can release today. Just one. Just one. If it has seemed so overwhelming, we're just going to start with one. It could just be, oh, release the hold that a bag of Lay's potato chips has over my spirit, okay? It could be just that. Just one. And then let your passion of the freedom that you would feel once you release that hold over you, let that pull you forward. Being free of something that doesn't honor you. I want you to take in another deep breath. And we're going to exhale that thing, that one thing. We're going to exhale that out of our spirit. We're going to inhale clarity. Take it in. Because right now we're clear that this has no longer served me. And now we're going to exhale it. Whatever remnants was left after that first breath, we're going to exhale it. And now we're going to inhale freedom. And we're going to hold it. We're going to hold it, hold it, hold it. And we're going to exhale it with an ah. Oh. Now, we are free of that one thing, just that one. Just that one that we've been holding on to that has not served or honored us. Mm. Now, when the thought comes back up about it, because you have breathed it out of your system. Remember when you would come in from dinner and you couldn't sit down at mama's table if you hadn't done what? Washed your hands. Washed your hands. <laughs> so baby, when the thought comes up, this is what I want you to do. I've washed my hands. I want you, I've washed my hands of it. I've released it from my mind and my spirit. Mm -hmm. It no longer has any power over me. I have cleansed my soul of that one thing and it does not have any more power over me. I've washed my hands of it and that's it. Yes. That's it. And keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. Yes. Woo! <laughs> well, happy Passion Friday, y'all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody said, why did the neighbor bring what? Um... One of the neighbors brought uh, two big bags of Lay's. I'm like, are you looking in the kitchen right now? I was, 
I was like, why is Danny in my kitchen right now? <laughs> Too big of Fritos, Lay's. Oh my right. God. Yes. I was like, why is she in my kitchen? And that's why I fell out. I just had to fall out. And I keep Ooh. going back. I say, no, leave, let the Lay's stay. <laughs> and see, Lay's may not be an issue for you. Okay. But baby, if I open up the family size bag, it's going to get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I just have to be delivered sometimes. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Woo. Praise God. And sometimes when I tell my husband to grab me a bag and I'll uh -huh. to bring me the tiny bag, he'll bring that, that bag. He'll build that. Yeah, that next help him. He's not helping that. me. <laughs> That's not helping. <laughs> I know, I know. Who, Lord, what's up, girl? Who, what's up, Miss Lolly? Well, uh, nothing much. I'm grateful today. Mm. Very grateful. Um, mm. I actually has no, this has nothing to do with what I was gonna say, but. My mom, my mother, um, has been dealing with some challenges, but in the meantime, she has taken her her passions into learning more about our family history, and that's been a really interesting ride. Um, I learned that one of my great grandfathers was born from a free slave woman and a French man in 1793 in Louisiana. Um, and I just thought that was so interesting because I already knew my mother instilled in me the importance of understanding our family being from Louisiana, but it just was further proof. And I just feel like I, last night I asked myself, I said, which, which of my ancestors am I representing right now? Like, what is it that I carry from, from them? Who, Which one? I would love to know who I'm most like in my lineage. Who, who, is, who is representing themselves through me? And I'm going to take the initiative to learn more and tap into that energy and figure out who that is. Because I would love to know. I think it's, it's quite an interesting experience and... Just speaking on my personal experience of all feeling that connection, that deep rooted connection to Louisiana that I, I talk about so much, I, I feel there's a reason that I felt called to be there. So stay tuned. But <laughs> um, what I really wanted to talk about is uh, I'm excited because in a, a few moments, I'll introduce um, my guest, Sharia Ayers. Um, but I wanted to give just a couple, um, I guess you could say it's a little bit of encouragement, but it's just kind of something to think about because, you know, we always, we talk about giving um, to our communities and because Sharia is a community, I was a community advocate or someone who works in the community and um, I guess brings light to the community, I would say. Um it's really interesting because we oftentimes see these people in these positions of really great power within our communities, but we don't realize what it takes to, to get to that point. Um, and there is a lot of times when you have a calling to a space or to a particular mission within the community that comes from um, you seeing or dealing with specific struggles throughout life. Um, and you finding some type of solution um, and finding some way to bring light out of it. So it was just a couple of things. First, I wanted to say, you know, pearls. I wanted to talk briefly about pearls. It's going to make sense in a second. But I saw something. I was just scrolling on my phone. And um, it just was mentioning how pearls are made because we often take advantage of them. I only own fake pearls at the moment. Um, but the real pearls, the expensive pearls come from oysters, which we know, but in order for those pearls to happen, they have to, that oyster has to literally be attacked by a parasite or some type of salt, something that's going to bother them. 
it has to shake them up. It has to shake up that gift so that they can present these pearls for later. And so in our in the same way, we're talking about in our lives and our community work and our connection with the people around us and our purpose and our passions, we're dealing with a lot of different things or seeing a lot of different things that we don't like, that bothers us, that stirs up something that's inside of us so that we can create those pearls. We can even be those pearls, you know? Um, and so I wanted to share, there is a poem I wanted to share and there was um, pieces of a reading that I wanted to share. Um, so one is a reading from one of my little Buddhist books. And it explains that obstacles enable us to polish our lives. Um, in one of his writings, Nishra and I shown an employee is the following simile. It will only be like a boar rubbing against the golden mountain. The story behind the simile goes something like this. Once there was a golden mountain, a boar came upon it and didn't like the fact that the mountain glittered brightly. It tried to erase the golden mountain's brilliance by rubbing against it. The boar's coat was stiff and he rubbed very hard. But what was the result? The harder the boar rubbed against the mountain, the brighter it shone. That I shown refers to it to teach us that the more practitioners um, will encounter obstacles, but the more obstacles that they encounter, the brighter their lives will shine. Um, so even when you're talking about in your work, in your community work, it says um, to shine ever more brightly, the more obstacles we face, this also provides an important lesson in the area of human relations. An organization is a gathering of all kinds of individuals. There may be some who are not easy to work with, Sometimes the behavior of others may really annoy or upset us, but such things make the golden mountain of our lives shine. If everyone or everything in our lives was perfect, we would never grow. Working together with people we may not get along with is the way to polish our golden mountain. And so I really wanted to encourage Sharia, I want to encourage you, but everybody else who works within the community is just like, it's not easy at all. It's not. It's, like I mentioned before, there are things that are going to stir up in you that are going to rub you the wrong way. And that rubbing you the wrong way is going to bring out something so powerful and so amazing. Um, and I wanted to read this poem as well. Um, this is from my girl, Icon. Her name is Shikandria. Um, She's from New Orleans. And it's called, The Filter Says to the Garden. Scrub off any evidence that you have actually lived today. Don't nobody want to taste the grimy, the grit, the journey on you or smell the musk or, or the funk of everything you struggled with today or force their eyes to behold you spotted or scarred or pitted or bruised or broken or busted or in any other form than flawless. Don't you know that the only beautiful flowers are those that smell of the sweetest ease and look like they ain't never been touched by the dirt? And so that poem I don't think it's saying that, like, really forget everything you've been through. Forget, you know, the things that are being, that are bothering you, that are rubbing against you, that are trying to, you know, take you off course. No, don't worry about that. You got pearls coming. They're going to be real nice. They're going to be some real nice pearls coming. And I know people are going to look at those pearls and be like, oh, look, it's so pretty. But they didn't see that parasite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They didn't see that dirt. They didn't see those people who were just not willing to work with you and just wouldn't budge. They didn't see the people who just looked at you like you didn't have a purpose or a passion in this earth. They didn't, they didn't see that. They didn't see that. But they saw the pearls. They see those flowers. They see that bright, shiny mountain. They see all of that part. So, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let them see that. It's okay. But as long as you know that the things that are coming into your life that are against you or seem like they're formed against you are going just before you. It's just a lesson. Um, and it's just going to help you. So with that being said, I got one more thing. You know, sorry, y'all. Not sorry. I See, you know what? Yep, no sorry. No, no sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Danny. Right. <laughs> I got to add one more thing, and I'm pretty sure I read this before, but this is from Bell Hooks, All About Love. This is, I, I bring this book up all the time, y'all. But it just talks about community. And so the last thing I want to say before I formally introduce my guest today, 
um, is this. I want to read this from it. And it says, um, to ensure human survival everywhere in the world, females and males organize themselves into communities. Communities sustain life. Not necessarily nuclear families or the couple, and certainly not the rugged individualist. There is no better place to learn the art of loving than in community. M. Scott Peck begins his book, The Different Drum, Community Making and Peace, with the profound declaration, in and through community lies the salvation of the world. Peck defines community as coming together of a group of individuals who have learned how to communicate honestly with each other, whose relationships go deeper than their masks of composure, and who have developed some significant com commitment to rejoice together, mourn together, and delight in each other and make others' conditions our own. We are all born into the world of community. And with that being said, I have somebody up here today <laughs> who is super, super amazing. I've been in awe since I met her. Um, I just love, I, I still don't know to everything that she does because it's, it's a lot, but it's inspiring. Um, and she is a founder of Juneteenth Jubilee Detroit, which I'm sure we'll talk about soon as well, because everybody should definitely come support. Um, and yes, yes, I'm going to leave that there because I don't even know what else to say. It's amazing. You're going to hear. So let's give it up for Sharia Ayer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Lolly. And I, I was excited um, this morning because one of my sister friends is on here, Susan. And then I see my family on here, Angie. But Mama, is it Hethu, Hetheru? Mama Het, Hetheru. Yeah. Mama <laughs> Hetheru. <laughs> yeah. hey, That's my family. Like, so, and thank you, thank you, thank you, Lolly, for considering me to be here. And just, you know, it, everything that has been said prior to me even um, being introduced, very, very much so affirming. And I thank you all for sharing and being vulnerable, you know, this this morning. So thank you, because it was just so many different things that were said. that were reassuring and reaffirming. And just when you know how God works in your life, you can understand and receive the messages that are given to you. So, again, I thank you, ladies, for for sharing, being vulnerable and inviting me here today. Okay, so um, I know I gave my little. My we're little honored. Video. I just want to say that we're oh, yeah. so honored. Yes, we're so thank honored. You. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, so I know I gave a short little spiel, just of maybe one, maybe yeah, just briefly what you do. But can you speak on like what do you do in the community, outside of the community? What is what is your passion? What are your purposes? So literally, um. Everything that has been a driving force for me has been because I'm black. And that's really all it is to it. Like, so prior to the work I do now with Black Leaders Detroit, um, I was working in education. And I loved education because I understood what that meant for our people and what that meant for everybody, everybody that I serve. So like being black has literally been the driving force for everything that I have in my life, even from going to college. Like when you know that you're honestly a minority in number and the things that people perceive from you or you're the only representation of blackness in certain areas, like that's pretty much what's, what's been my driving force in so many different things. And including, you know, Juneteenth Jubilee Detroit, like that, only came about, um, unfortunately, at a time when my father was dying. But my sister and I went out to kind of get an get an escape from reality, and we went out for St. Patrick's Day. And I'm seeing all these black people wearing green, and so I got on my soapbox like they don't even know the history of St. Patrick's Day. We out here wearing green, you know, like you ain't Irish, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying that people can't celebrate others, but I also think it's it's very um, important to know your history. Like that's literally what I taught also. So it's just like, so my sister, she was like, what are you going to do about it? And I was like, hmm, 
like, thanks for holding me accountable. But um, so I was like, you know, we should do a Juneteenth. And so that Monday, um, I spoke with my mom about it. And she like, well, why don't you call one of the blackest places here? So I called the Wright Museum. And in 2019 was the inception of Juneteenth Jubilee Detroit. I called the Wright. They're receptive to the plan. And then I put the call out on Facebook. And some amazingly dope people signed up to be part of the committee. And it's just been a blessing each year from there. And this will be our fifth celebration. So, um, and then in addition to that, like I now am a director with Black Leaders Detroit and we are a funding source for small black led businesses and nonprofits that operate in the city. So our whole goal is building an economic ecosystem for our people to be self-sustainable. Like we did it in the past, we had, several black owned operated and funded cities towns and you name it and they were terrorized and they were bombed and and we have gotten so far away from the fact that we know how to work together we just need the recipe to do so and now it's something here in the city where you don't even have to have the recipe you can just be a part of it and make change because it's cyclical like if black businesses have dollars then black families have dollars because they're going to employ black people, you know? And then those black families are then gonna go out and then themselves become entrepreneurs and give back to the community. So everything I've done um, up until this point has been about being black from having a black trivia business to even again, my sister friend being on, on here, we work together with planning weddings. And again, if you didn't know, Black people weren't even allowed to get married in this country. So it's just so many different things that drives my passion from what I know about my history. Hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. That is, that is really beautiful. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that's amazing that you have a, if it was, if we were talking about music, I would say you have a keen ear, but you have a, a, a keen receptiveness to, I guess, the the little things that you see, I guess we take advantage of or we we overlook, we don't really recognize, I suppose, is, is such a beautiful thing that we can do now. We can celebrate now. We can marry now and have formal big weddings because, you know, you can see people get married. You're like, wow, you y'all, y'all did that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the little subtleties, I think, that we just kind of just sweep under the rug. It's like, oh, it's every day, but it is, it's definitely an opportunity or a, I don't know, that's not the word I was actually going to use, but a privilege, a privilege mm -hmm. that we can actually enjoy these things now. So that's awesome. Um, So another question that I had for you was, you know, when did you really start stepping into your connection with the power of Blackness? Um. I don't even think I really had an option not to because like my mother is a very, very strong woman and I wasn't even allowed like not to have a voice or not think on my own. Like she would put us in positions where we had to, you know, like we watched Roots together. We watched Color Purple together. We watched all the black movies together. But outside of that, like being black was just a part of my every day. And, and like I said, um, my mother didn't allow me not to have a voice. Like when I was young, you know how some people's parents would say like children are to be seen and not heard. No, that was not Charlene. She like, if you don't speak, you don't eat. Like, what do you want? Tell this, you know, <laughs> order something like speak up. All they could do is say no. So it, it was just, I, I don't even think I had the option to be anything else, but embrace my blackness and, and what I saw, you know? So, um, so yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I've been doing things that have been culturally centered. Like I said, the majority of my life, like even back in high school, I was planning events and doing things around Black History Month. And I took that on to my teaching career. And every year I did stuff at every school I was at, you know, except for when I was working at a white school and the Black students, they wanted to do it, but um, you know, it's administrative issues, but I no longer work there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, I, I just, I've always embraced it. And thank you for asking that. So, Danny yeah. has a question. 
I do. God bless you. Um, I heard you say that being black fueled you. Mm -hmm. Tell me what sustained you. God, like literally. And, and I mean, um, and I just say that because just when it comes to my story, um, well, part of my story, like they told my mom I wasn't going to live past 16 and at a young age, people pray for me, you know, and again, I, as Lolly kind of summed up earlier, I don't take that for granted. So every day that I live, I, I praise God. And when I'm, when I'm feeling shaken in my spirit or not, I acknowledge the fact that there are people in my life that, that are the God that I need to see at the time. So mm -hmm. that's what sustains me because being black ain't always easy. Anymore. It's right. It's right. <laughs> that's why I ask. Yeah. You know, it's I not. know it's not. It's and not. And also being a black woman, you know, yes. the intersectionality of everything yes. is not yes. easy. But yes, at the so, end of the day, yeah. But yeah. It, but like I said, even with this morning, just certain things were in my spirit. Even though I've had a great week, but just the things that were said this morning. It was what I needed. It was what I what I didn't even know I wanted. But that's yeah. how God works in my life. It, yeah. God is very much so tangible. God is very much so here. Like it's no coincidence that you know the people who who help and and even have made some of my ideas of reality. Like it's nothing short of God putting people in my life to help me. So I don't take advantage of any of that. And I just honestly believe that when we talk about God being love, that that is the God in us in human form. So uh -huh. that's what sustains me because yes. I can acknowledge the God through the people in my life. I can acknowledge the God in circumstances, even though it might be hard, you know? Yeah. So that's yeah. what sustains me. Mm -hmm. Do you have, or if you would share... Uh, a, a, do you have a daily practice that there are things that you must do to sustain your spirit? Is there something that that you do, mantras that you say? Mm -hmm. Is there something that you do on a regular basis that you can share with us? Well, every morning, <clears throat> um, I have the Bible app on my phone and each morning they have like a little message and then it's a scripture and then it's a devotional, then it's a prayer. So I start my mornings off with that because it's something different each day. And then another thing that I do every day, like anytime before 12 p.m., I can't listen to secular music. It's just, I just can't. Like, like I need to hear some some gospel, some somebody singing from their soul. Like that's what I need. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, with that, that's that's just uh that's just what I do every day. So yeah. I love how you said before 12 p.m. Because <laughs> I I tell people everything before 12 p.m. belongs to me. <laughs> I'm not making no appointments. That's you know, great. now sometimes with these doctor's appointments, you have to get in there when you can. Yeah. Um yeah. and I understand that, but you know, I'm not. Don't don't call me with no no, no. foolishness or whatever it is. Because all the hours be before 12 p.m. belong to me. Mm -hmm. And because I'm committed to that, I'm allowed to be able to wake up and move how I want to move, as slow as I want to mo move, or as fast as I want to move, or and then do those things that fortify and uplift my spirit. So that is, it. I like that that twelve noon hour. That's the hour right there. Anything before that belongs to me and God. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Head. Sharia, how are you? I'm good. Good, good. And everybody, hi everybody. Hi Elizabeth. <laughs> we, have new, we have a new sister on board. Mm. So I wanted to ask, what encouraged you to become a teacher besides your blackness? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned before, like. I've always, like, God has always spoken to me in a tangible sense. Like, everybody has a relationship, but 
when I got to Bowling Green, I initially uh, thought I was going into business, right? But when I went to the orientation for the business school, um, not going to lie, I think I'm over analytical for math. And there was a lot of math classes. Like, and I say that because I remember being in third grade doing long division and I just kept going. And my teacher was like, baby, you had the answer back then. I was like, well, nobody told me like it's long division, you know? So <laughs> needless to say, when I went to the business school orientation, it was a lot of math classes. And I was like, yo, I already know my strong suits, you know, and um, I got a four year scholarship and I'm not even trying to struggle to stay here. So I didn't know what I was going to do. But the funny thing was, as I was, you know, on campus, it was this man who was at my sister's graduation because my sister also went to Bowling Green. But this man was at my sister's graduation and he sat with our family and we like, anybody know this guy? You know, like, like, who is this? But um, he like sat at our table and got the key key in and chopping it up. And, you know, we met him. He was cool, but he was just there to celebrate the Black students graduated from Bowling Green. But that same man I saw during orientation, he was like, hey, like, I remember you from, you know, whatever, whenever my sister graduated back in May. And it was like August then. He's like, I remember you. Like, hey, check out the School of Education. And I was like, what are the odds of this random man who sat with us, who we was kind of hating on, like, you know, like, just so happened to find me as I'm not knowing what to do on campus after not going into business. Um, Cause I, like I said, I still don't know why you need calculus for business, but again, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Um, so I checked out the school of education and he was an advisor for the school of education at Bowling Green. And so I just took that as a sign, like check this out where I'm supposed to be in. And I honestly loved teaching. Like that was the only job where I complained less, you know? I could so, tell by the students. I could tell the way that they received me when we were working at HFA. Yeah. Um, that was a beautiful experience. Um, also, what was the scripture today? That's what I wanted to know. What was the scripture? Oh, today? I put it in the chat. It was John okay. 3.16. Okay. Mm. Mm. John 3.16. All right. Y'all make a note. Make a note. Love the world. Yep. Thank you so much for sharing and being open for coming mm. back. Thank you for inviting. Thank you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. We go way back, y'all. Way back. <laughs> oh, little socks and sh little shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for little socks and little shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mama Head. Ebony. Yes, I would like to know more about your your business. Um, and how do you connect and bring that into your, your purpose? So great question. Um, so again, just everything that I do with, well, okay, let me go back. Cause it is a lot, but, um, so I do have a trivia business and that's literally based on black history. Like it's called blackout trivia. And it started because I was a trivia nerd and again, being in situations where we're talking about whiteness all the time and now we're competing about white topics. I'm like, you need to learn about black people. Like, and so that's again part of my passion and purpose. Being black has driven me. So that um, as I said before, I work with my sister friend, she's the CEO of your wedding muse and black love and knowing the fact that we did not have the right to be married in this country that feels that um so again just all of these businesses are around serving our community along with like black leaders detroit we're literally a funding source for black led businesses and nonprofits so we give grants to nonprofits and we also give no interest loans to black led businesses small black led businesses that operate in the city and we do that through cooperative economics. So our members invest $4 a month. We take that $4 and put it directly in, into the hands of Black entrepreneurs that operate in Detroit. Because we understand the Black experience and the disenfranchisement. And just even the fact that, unfortunately, a lot of us didn't have the knowledge of, the, of various things. It's like, we talk about financial literacy. But we don't talk about financial ignorance. And it's a difference. Like, and, and ignorance is not always a negative term as much as it is, like, it's literally not knowing. Uh -huh. So if I know that I wanted to start a business, but I don't understand business credit, personal credit, or how to access capital, like, I could have all the ideas, 
all the 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 stamina that it takes everything to even start a business but if i don't understand the basics financially then what am i going to do so the beauty about where i work now as a director is that we are literally trying to build something that we already had the ingredients to you know like our people literally did these things and we've always had a communal aspect. And um, Lolly mentioned earlier about rugged individualism. That's a very westernized way of thinking. Like black people from various parts in the continent of Africa to where we were all mixed up here on purpose, by the way, just to throw that out there. Because if you put people in the same space who don't speak the same language, like we literally always had to depend on one another. And we got into this thinking of to be American is to be and adopt more whiteness, you know, and more practices of whiteness. So I say all that to say, I love what I do. I love what I am doing and everything in regards to my career aspects have been about my passion and purpose. And I'm just very grateful that I'm even in this position because I never even thought that I could have a job that would allow me to be unapologetically black. That'll allow me to share information to people who look like me to help them that. And again, just, it's just so many different things. And I'm sorry if I'm, I'm rambling a little, but. No, sorry. Even, thank you. Mm -hmm. You just don't even understand that like we are the second largest consumer group in America, yes. but we do yes. not make up the majority of the wealth. Mm -hmm. And the thing is with living in a city that is predominantly black, we need to understand our geopolitical power as one. And so even when it comes to like June team celebrations, because people, I've gotten this criticism throughout the years, people say like, well, aren't we forgetting the problems? Aren't we this, aren't we that by just celebrating? No, we're not mm -mm. because you get more bees with honey. So if I get you there to celebrate, but then I'm leaving you with resources about your mental health, your finances, and ways to access these things and people or putting you in a space where you can meet a Lolly, you can meet an Angie, you can meet a Sheila, you can meet a Danny, you can meet a you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, mm -hmm. it's a matter of, again, cultivating spaces where people can connect and that's how you literally grow. So thank you for asking and yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Mm -hmm. mm. Rich, yes, it it's rich. It, lead, it led me into another question actually. I'm so interested. Um, so um, I I am a firm believer on promoting self advocacy and youth, and you are the what you just said is pretty much the epitome of the self advocacy from your family and from your history um, to produce what you are, and that's amazing. How do we um, get this power that you have into our youth that we have today? Mm. Great question. And the only thing that I can say from my experiences, especially working in education, is you provide them with the opportunities. So if you build a space for them to grow and to be empowered, they'll reach that potential. Because one thing that I realized, I used to work at an all-girls school. I worked at a diverse, it was diverse, in a school in Lansing. I worked at an all-white school in Fremont, Ohio. And I've also worked at HFA, which, uh, which was an artsy school, Osborne. So I've been in a lot of different settings. Um, but I say that to say in each setting, one thing that I realized is that it's a lot of things that need work with urban education. But if you allow them a platform, no matter where they come from or their backgrounds, they can reach a potential that you set in front of them. So like, for instance, um, with the all-girls school, each each year we did a Black Girls Rock um, program. And what, what it was, was we would name various awards. So it's kind of like a mock election. So each award was named after a Black woman who made history in that category. And it was like a, a whole production. So the scholars danced, they sang, they did the speaking, they recruited um, members from the community to speak. But the thing was, I just provided the platform, but I allowed the scholars to do the production. So the scholars that were good at art, they did the decor and decorated the auditorium and came up with a budget and figured out how much we had to raise. And again, I just simply asked them questions like, okay, what is the vision? Did you draw it out? 
How much is this going to cost us? So stuff like that. And then we had people who were speakers. And I never told them like, hey, you don't speak well. You can't do it. But if they wanted to do it, I would help them, you know, and I would try to empower them. Like, you know, don't worry about if you study or stutter a little bit, like who, who speaks well, you know what I mean? Like, so just Moses stutter. Right. Like, so the whole thing is just that or or the yeah. people who wanted to sing, allowing them to sing. And I'm no choir director by far. But again, every space that that needed to be filled to to put on this production, I allowed the students to do it and I just empowered them to do so. And at each one of those different schools, what occurred was they did not have those opportunities because nobody created it for them. So if you cre if you create a space for our youth to thrive and feel empowered, they're going to reach that potential. And then you have to encourage them and speak over them. And that's the thing, like every situation I was in, I call them scholars because I also have a degree in psychology. And I understand that repetitiously conditioning makes a difference. So it's like, I call you a scholar at the beginning of the year. I educate you on what that term means. And by the end of the year, they were self-managing. Mm -hmm. They were like, you're not being a scholar. Like, don't do that. Sit down. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't even have to say anything. So, but it's just, it's the same in the opposite. Like if you always speak a negative on somebody or yourself, you're going to internalize that. So I say all that to say you have to condition the scholars or young, our youth to be empowered by speaking positivity over them. You have to be very much so fair and strict so that they understand because that was something I saw at Osborne. Like some of the staff were afraid of the students. So I'm like, they kick it, you know? They're still youth. They're still young. They want somebody to tell them the way to go and then also show them that they care. So, you know, so again, being being fair yet strict on certain things and then building platforms for them to actually reach their potential. Because again, if nobody is doing anything, so if somebody want to sing or rap or write or whatever, and they don't have a space to do that, creating spaces for them to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll share. I love that. I really love that. And that made me think about the inner child that's, that exists within us and in this life that we live currently. And, you know, everyone's always like, life's not fair. But when you think about it, it's just not always expected the things we have to go through and deal with. But life is strict. And I would say similarly to how when you're saying we have to be both fair and strict with the children, I feel like in, with us as adults as well, as we're exploring our passions and our purpose, we have to um, allow that strictness and fairness that exists in life to be something that pushes us forward um, yeah. in, in our work. And so I appreciate that, um, that perspective. And I'm going to take some notes because I work with, with the youth for now. And I'm like, hmm, if I call them musicians, maybe they'll stop playing in the jam room. <laughs> um, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> um, but something that uh, came up earlier, you were speaking on, you know, the birthing of the concept of Juneteenth, Jubilee Detroit, and how that happened. And you said, um, that your sister was holding you accountable by asking you, you know, what you're going to do about it. So in your, I guess, in your life, who do you wish was held accountable in your life? Or, or who do you, who do you think should be held accountable now? Either or. Honestly, nobody. And I just say that because um, through my life experiences and again, just growing, trying to grow as a person, I had a very hard time withholding grudges and God is still working on me, but I had a hard time withholding grudges and not understanding the concept of forgiveness. And I had gone to church one day and um, they were talking about how forgiveness is for you. And that's why, again, with Danny and saying, let things go and wash your hands of it, that takes a lot of practice, you know? So when I did feel like certain people should have been held accountable in my life, and, and just to be clear before I say what I'm going to say, I don't rejoice in people's statements, 
But one thing that I've learned in my life from being hurt, being upset, being sad and, and wishing somebody was held accountable, God taught them better lessons than I could ever. So that's why I just say I don't. And that's why when it says in the word as well, vengeance is mine. So say if the Lord you really do have to actively practice washing your hands and stuff <laughs> because there's certain stuff that I don't even have to hold people accountable for. And I just pray every day that I can work on my attitude to where God don't have to teach me to be accountable. So, you know, like, so that's, that's just, that's a good question though. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I want to expound on that just a bit that when we talk about who should we hold accountable? Um, first and foremost, we should hold ourselves accountable for the things that we say mm -hmm. that we're going to do. We don't even keep our own promises to ourselves, but we want to hold somebody else accountable. All right. So um, if we could just look within and say, what am I accountable to myself? What have I told myself today that I have not done, that I said I was going to do, that I was going to go and I didn't go? Where, where, who, how can I hold myself accountable? All right. And once I look externally, I have to look and that power of forgiveness is such an important piece, but I have to recognize that at point, some point in time, people are only doing the best that they know how to do with the information that they have and how they process it. So, um, with uh, and it 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 talks. You you spoke about the financial ignorance. It's just the not knowing. Sometimes people just don't know, and we can't hold people accountable for what they don't know. Right. So that power of forgiveness, you know, like the Christ said. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. People just don't know. All right. So start if we start with ourselves, holding ourselves accountable to those things that we promise ourselves for ourselves and about ourselves. If we could start right there, that's half the battle. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's nice. That's nice. I think that that brings me to another question. Since we're holding ourselves accountable, um, what do, where do you see yourself going? Um, what what type of things would you like to? What type of, I guess, I don't know. Ventures do you see yourself going on with your passion, or what is something that is calling you that you haven't really stepped into yet? Um, what are some of those things? Um, I think sorry, I'm I'm gonna be real with you. Like, I didn't even know this was possible. So, I pretty much just I just live and do. Like, I mean, something come about. If I had a next day, thank God, I'm gonna just work at it. But um, that's what it looks like to be a willing spirit. If you said, Lord, your will, not my will be done, then yeah. that means that's what it looks like. Yes. Thank you. Because yeah. I was like, man. Yeah. And, and you're right. Because I've definitely been in such situations where I tried to do something that was different from God's will and it backfired. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I don't regret it because I had to learn. So, yeah. but I will say just something that I want to um, step into and continue to practice is just what love looks like for me on a regular basis, you know, and, and practicing that because I do try to show love and I try to be of support to the people in my circle. Um, but just understanding love for myself. And, and when I say that, like self-care, because like, I could be very industrious and then mess around and I haven't even been to the doctor, you know what I'm saying? Like, or... I don't know, just random stuff with like aging. Like I got a bald spot. I'm like, where did that come from? But again, that can be from like stressing and just moving, shaking, not watering my hair and scalp, you know? So just, I want to get better with, with self-care and love as well as walking into what my love looks like 
um, and, and capacity managing for others. I have a that capacity managing for others. What what is that? What does so like um literally this month it's been a lot. Like you know how you're you could be in a good space, but mm -hmm. everybody else who you care about and and love, like they're going through major things, and you tend to internalize that, you know. Okay, I got you. Okay, mm -hmm. not for others, but with others. Correct. Okay. So just yeah. like, you know how you want to yeah. show love and how mm -hmm. you want to keep giving, but you have to manage capacity because you yes. take on so much. Like, yes. And, and to yeah. the point where like literally last weekend, I'm like, dang, man, like, why am I sad? And I'm so blessed. But it was just because I had been internalizing so much stuff and trying to be there for other people as best as I could. And just the simple fact that if you're not in control of a situation, what can you really do? Yeah. So yeah. that's what I mean by capacity managing on the individual level. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That and that's that is a valuable tool for us to learn, because I, you all know that I, my best friend just passed, and so I'm working with. Uh, creating a new normal for myself without her physical presence. Mm -hmm. However, um, there are still things that need to be done. You know, there we still have to show up. We still have to do. So what I did was I gave myself permission. I gave myself the permission not to do any clients, not to do anything that would take more energy than I had. And unapologetically, and just to just be, to just be. And I don't feel guilty about taking that time because as you said, that self-care is so valuable to the spirit and the soul. So yeah, give ourselves permission to do just that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well. <laughs> We the duty be on it with the with the websites. <laughs> <laughs> I am your producer. Hey. <laughs> I am the tech person. Whatever. <laughs> so can you kind of tell us more about this organization? I definitely will be contacting you because I have something that would marry well with what you all are doing. And mm -hmm. um I just like to find out more. And then I'd like to, do you have a Juneteenth flyer? I mean, a site will yep. go to that. So that, cause you're, I'm sure in the midst of putting that together now, cause June is around the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I'm hey. putting the Juneteenth Jubilee site um, in the chat. But this And your is, information. Uh-huh. For, and your for contact the, information. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the Black Leaders Detroit site, this is, we have our upcoming event, which is the Ride for Equity. And we ride bikes from Detroit to Mackinac, Mackinac City to be exact. Um, wow. To increase awareness of the need for equitable funding practices for Black entrepreneurs. So in five of the cities we ride through, we stop and we have community conversations because we understand that equity is something that has to be co-created. Like it shouldn't all just be on us because we didn't necessarily cause the problem. Mm -hmm. So with that, we ride our bikes from Detroit to Mackinac. But the first leg of the ride, I don't know if you guys are riders or if you just want to come out and support, but the first leg of the ride is from Detroit to Ferndale, and that's our kickoff. So that's what happens um, first portion. So that's what we have coming up May 21st. And then overall with the site, this is where you can find out information about just loans. You can become a member. And um, so the donation part, that's, that's the membership. So the $1 a week or the $4 a month or $52 annually. So again, we take that money and put it directly into the loans and grants for Black-led businesses and nonprofits. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So, and actually that number is incorrect because we're over $300,000 and over a thousand members um, as of now, but we're looking to get to a million members because the more members we have to practice cooperative economics, the more money we can put out to our people. And the concept pretty much came from our CEO, like going to the Million Man March and being inspired and trying to recultivate that energy. And um, so that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in our loan cycle, I don't know if anybody on the line has a business, but our loan cycle um, is about to open up again April, well, huh, tomorrow. So get a little video. And then, oh yeah, it's businesses all up and through here, y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I I got to see when Nefertiti was surprised. Um, I I kind of felt like this was was the same group once I saw the yep. um, beginning picture, but she was blown. She almost fell out because <laughs> she <laughs> she couldn't believe what you know was happening. And and yep. you know this is how we. You know, we don't need to keep waiting on people. We are, are we are what, what we say, we are we got, you know. Yep. Because sometimes I appreciate the grants, but mm -hmm. um, grants from other businesses, from larger corporations, but what I feel is happening is that they want, they kind of want your everything. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then they, then they get to tell you how you have to use their money. Right. So that's something else to be mindful of. Whereas, and thank you for bringing that up too, because yeah, um, it, it yeah, is yeah. a yeah. the grants yeah. are unrestricted, right? Because okay. Mama, okay. I, I remember when Mama Shu okay. was going through the process, and mm -hmm. I told her, she, I said, you don't, you don't give up your. This is your your baby, if you will. Since we're in Elizabeth's right now, this is your baby, and you raise it how you want. You make sure you put that. You know, any contract that we get to sign, you have the right to scratch out what you don't agree with, change it, right. or say no, this isn't a part of it. And if they agree or not, then you know that's on you know that's on the negotiation. But we have to protect our what do they call it? Your in, your intellect. Yes. Your business intellect electuality because i know that they are taking these ideas and using them because they're getting the, the blueprint but that's okay because the you want the purpose of it to to spread you know but yes. hold on to your um your interest and your control of your interest for your your businesses so you got to be mindful about that i don't want to put a damper on it but that's some real no, but you're right real world shit. um Sheree, I just want to say, damn, you know, I had no idea. You know, <laughs> when we, we were, we grew up in church together and our mothers were really close and they sang together. And so it was um, very, um, you know, we're family. And yeah. so I appreciate all that you are doing and watching you blossom and grow and just sending the ripples through the world because I know they're coming back. Once they hit a wall, they're coming back to you. <laughs> I, know, I know your youth are coming back and telling you the things that they're doing. So I'm just encouraged and, and grateful to know you and have you on my guide path. I really appreciate Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. Sure. Man. I'd like to... Um... Oh, go ahead. Well, Susan, I'd like to have a face and not just your name in my memory. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now her red lips, baby. <laughs> well, For another time. <laughs> okay, we figure you might be at work or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, ladies. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're always welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I joined the group on or sent a request to join on Facebook this morning. That's so sad. Right, and you didn't have to wait for a response. You just <laughs> Well, I will support you. She's one of the amazing ones that we meet in the world, so I'm always awesome. in support of her and everything she does. Yes. So I wanted to join to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Sue, well, We are here Monday through okay. Friday, every day. Monday through Friday from eight to 10 okay. different hosts each day. So it's a different flavor. And um, so you're welcome to stop in on, on any day.
Thank passion you. And purpose is on Friday. That what was that? Us. I said passion and purpose is on Friday, and that be us, me be us. and <laughs> Molly and, <laughs> and Danny. <laughs> Mama Head is on Wednesday. Wisdom Wednesdays. Yes. Yeah. And uh, let me see anybody else on here that okay, yeah. Ebony. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say how perfect charade business that you popped up on the screen. It would be perfect for Sister Lakeisha because I think she was talking about um mm -hmm. me and me. She has a beautiful, beautiful idea, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful idea for um like self care for black 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 people, and she is she is looking for funding. Okay, and. If we could just keep your information to pass on to her, that'd mm -hmm. be great, especially your contact information. And I wouldn't mind helping her write a grant for you for that, if that um, is okay with her once we get in touch with her. But that, that would be beautiful. And I wanted to ask you a question about um, how do you feel? I'm, I'm also a community organizer as well. You are inspiring me every day. Um, but I would like to know, how do you feel about, um, like your environmental justice? I say down river. We have a lot of environmental issues over here down river. But how, how is the um, environmental equities going on in Detroit? Do you guys touch base on that as, as opposed like in your business or during the Juneteenth? Do you educate our people on like environmental awareness and what that will look like for us? So I'm not going to lie to you. Um, with Black Leaders Detroit, we have funded several entrepreneurs in various backgrounds. So if there is an environmental justice firm or whatever else, we support them. So it doesn't matter what you do. If okay. we, we'll fund it, you know? Um, well, I lied. <laughs> I said it doesn't matter. It does. Like if it's <laughs> if it's debaucherous, we're not gonna fund it. But <laughs> but uh, to your point, with Juneteenth, we have focused on pretty much health, wealth, and education. And part of the educational process is understanding envir the env environmental piece. And we haven't taken a larger stance on it because I do think that we have to educate our own more on what that mm -hmm. looks like in its totality and I say that because I also taught science with the, one of the things that I felt like we also didn't hit on is the fact that during the pandemic they kept saying that black people were more susceptible to getting COVID and so on and so forth but that's also all environmental as well mm -hmm. because anybody who lives in cities typically have issues respiratory issues in regards mm -hmm. to asthma allergies sinus issues, you know? So when it comes to the breathing, that's the issue of the city and the environment in which you live in. Mm -hmm. So naturally, if more black and brown people are in concentrated areas and cities where the air quality is not as good, you're gonna be more susceptible to a respiratory infection that can affect your, your whole being. Thank so, you exactly. so much for saying that. Exactly. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> but, but that's the thing though, I guess. So to your point, we haven't taken as large of a stance because I look at it more of the health side of it, yeah. because people have to understand what that means to an individual before they can understand what that means environmentally. Because I hate to say it, but most people go from the inside out and not the yeah. outside in. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, so to your point, we could probably do better about it. And if you have any resources that you would like to share, we typically give away swag bags to most of the registrants that come to Juneteenth, to the Juneteenth Jubilee Stroll. And in those bags, that's what I was saying earlier, we put resources. So okay. anything about, anything you got, we're going to put it in there, whether it's a, a business card or an ink pen, whatever. So if you have something that you want to leverage, you put in those bags by all means, please do so. Okay. Awesome. I almost, uh, I had a little, a little emotional moment for a second when Ebony mentioned Lakeisha. 
And the reason is, is because this whole conversation has very much been centered around Ujama Cooperative Economics. Um, Sheree, I wanted to thank you for carrying on that principle throughout the year, years, your life. But <laughs> but I this is just reminded me of like, you know, in, in December, everybody was going through all of the principles of Kwanzaa. And it's like, yeah. And then it's like, all right, now where is January and February and March and it don't matter anymore. And and it, but it does. But it does. It's something, it's a principle, which is something that we live by. And so in your work all around, it is it is all about that principle. Um, and the reason I got emotional when Ebony was speaking of Lakeisha was that um just yesterday we had a call. Um, we were on this on this uh call, and she was speaking on, Lakeisha was speaking on her business and not being able to get the funding that she was looking for. Um and that she had worked so hard for and and everyone encouraged her and poured into her. But it was amazing when Ebony brought it up because it reminded me of this community that we build so much so that we'll lift up other people's names so that they can win, so that we can win. You know, and I think that that is such a beautiful effort. It's not that individualist um, experience at all. You spoke on earlier about um, as a community, we've known how to work together and figure it out. So I don't know why we'd be forgetting sometimes, <laughs> but it just was such a beautiful thing because regardless of what the actual outcome is, whether she's able to get funding through, you know, um, the Black leaders or not, you know, this, that, the fact that we will uplift each other so much so to have this truly cooperative form of economics is amazing. So I just wanted to say that because that just was profound for me. Thanks, Lolly. And if I must also share too, what made me think about something additionally was um. So <clears throat> I I taught social studies just in general, and I minored in history. But one of the things that I also want to share, and it might be a little circuitous to get there, but anywho, the guy who came up, the white guy who came up with the system of of capitalism. He never went outside of Europe to learn anything else. So I always think it's interesting that it's this singular story that we have developed a whole economic system based on. And, you know, when I did more reading and learning, um, I can't remember the exact village right now, but there is a village in the continent of Africa in which one of the things that they do is based on who needs the money most in the village is who the pot goes to. Mm -hmm. So they literally have a pot that, well, not a literal pot, but they have like a pot of money that everybody invests in in the community. And like, if your bills are paid, your bills are paid, but you know, Ebony's bills not paid, then we're going to give the money to Ebony this week because we're all sustained. And it goes throughout the village constantly. And that's how they support each other. Mm -hmm. And then in other spaces, it's also where like internships mean a whole nother level. Like if I get an intern, you literally have to pay it for it. So like if my intern does not have a job, then it's on me until they get one. And then I have to hold them accountable until to get an intern and do the same thing. So I'm sharing all this to say that even on a small scale to Lolly's point, if somebody can't get funding from a, a basic institution or even if they need more work to get money from our institution, there are also resources that help you and we can connect you with that, that help you in regards to operations. But on a very micro scale, something that I would like to if, um, implement later and I'm working on it with the CEO is just the concept of giving circles, which is also something internationally that people do. So if you don't necessarily have access per se, you and your network can literally have like a potluck dinner and everybody pour into the pot. And then you all can vote or decide who's getting the pot based on what's needed and set up the criteria. And that's the giving circle. And I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be every week, every month, whatever, but it might be at on a need basis and mm -hmm. i'm trying to cultivate it so it'll work in our structure um because you know detroit 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like those soups that they yeah, have. Exactly. You, know, you might have three. I'm just dreaming up this. You might have three or five bottles, and everybody put five dollars in those bottles, and then at the end mm-hmm. of the night, you know, people will bring you their ideas, right? You have you have a meal. People bring your ideas, tell you about their businesses, and then they vote on who gets the money. And I think that works very well too, because then you don't have to pull a whole lot out of your pocket because the whole community is doing it. That's what Garvey did. He asked everybody to donate a dollar and got a million dollars to buy a boat so they could go and get up out of here. And they yep. put him in jail for it. <laughs> yep. I learned go. that's what um, Barry Gordy did to start Motown. Mm-hmm. His family had a pot and they gave it. He had to do the same thing. He didn't even get the, as much money he requested. He had to pay he him got back. 800. My brother just told me about that. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't need, we don't need no big system to do these beautiful, wonderful things. We really don't. Yeah. And that's the thing. But also, you know, if you don't know how to coordinate it on the micro scale, that's why you got Black Leaders Detroit. But yeah. on the flip side, right, shameless plug. So no, but on the flip <laughs> side. <laughs> but I would, you know, and I'm just saying that because clearly with, with li- lifting up Keisha, if this is something that you all feel passionate about, and hopefully I'll get to speak with Keisha as well. Then why I think not? she, she yeah. jumped on here at some point. I think I seen yeah, her keep show. Look, Keisha with her little outfit on, looking, Grand looking Rising, like Keisha with your cute self. Grand looking Rising, like money. Grand Rising. Yes. I'm fine, so I'm a bit quiet, but I, I'm almost in tears. I don't want to tear up because I'm driving, but I just appreciate the sisterhood. Like, this is this really a wonderful connection. Like, we really are doing a wonderful thing. You all are doing a wonderful thing. Like, you know, just God intended for us to help one another. That's what we're here. We're blessed to be a blesser. We're here to serve. I feel like God is looking for more good people with money to really be able to to help. And just for you all to think about me, I'm just like, it's just, I'm just so grateful and thankful that the universe guided me, you know, to you all because you all do make a difference. And so do you, Lakeisha. So do you. So do you. Let's take a breath on that. Yes. yes. <laughs> so we definitely look forward to what you have to share and, you know, our thoughts about your show and how we can support you. And that's how it is with everyone. That is, um, that's the grand rising. <laughs> <laughs> What can you say, Danny? Oh. <laughs> mm. It's hot in here. It's hot. It's hot. It is. Well, y'all <laughs> sure got me together yesterday. Y'all I got me together. To that. I'm on fire. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, glad, Lakeisha, because I didn't know if you was crying or laughing. I was crying or rejoicing. I was like, wait a minute now. Hold up. Let me hold on. Let me <laughs> I did the work. I did that work. <laughs> Yeah, it made me think about um, the Detroit, let me see, Detroit Community Choir? No, 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 the, the Youth Choir. Yes. It went to um, America's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. No, that wasn't America's Got Talent. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. Yes, it was. Uh-huh. It's America's Got yeah, Talent. Right, right. right. Mm-hmm. And um, the first time, and they did not win, they came into first place. But boy, when they got home, oh no, you number one. We oh. got you, baby. We got you. And that's what I love. I loved about Detroit. They just like, yeah, them babies was number one in our world, mm-hmm. period. And they went back for the best of, remember? Yeah. Yes. They went yes. back for the mm-hmm. best of and tow it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tow it up. Yes. I really believe, believe that the community, if we as a people, we can set, <clears throat> I always thought that instead of the, 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 the press telling us about, telling the world about Detroit, that we're the ones, we let them know who we are. We position ourselves in, to do that. 
this is who we are. This is what we stand for. This is how we take care of our own. So I, I love what you're doing, Sharia, right? Sharia? Sharia. 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 Uh, everything is, is pronounced. Sharia. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I trust you. <laughs> I really, glad. <laughs> I really do. I trust you. I trust your, your decision mm -hmm. uh, and that you're making, because you are making them on behalf of the community of, of Detroit and how <clears throat> and who we represent and how we are represented to the world, what you're doing, what each of us are doing. And so when you can say, when I can say, I trust you, if someone was to come with some bad news about Sharia, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> same with each and every one of you. I would want to <laughs> oh, stop. stop. So thank you so much for coming on. Um, I wanted to just share this and then we'll continue our conversation wherever it's going to go. But I do want to invite the two of you to come to our, our conference coming up okay. in May, May the 2nd, May the 12th and the 13th, birth your visions and dreams with passion and purpose. And uh, you definitely are one of those that, um, is, is <clears throat> who is living your life like this. We have some awesome speakers. Yeah, you do. Awesome performers. And um, Elizabeth is all about birthing. So this is showing me being pregnant as, you know, and the different things that I'm pregnant with as a speak, speak speaker, a dancer, a designer, all of that. That's around, well, I'm sure you know the story of Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. When Mary went to see Elizabeth, her baby leaped. And when her baby leaped, it just reminds us that we want to be around people who cause babies to leap. I love it when I'm around those kind of people. I'm quiet when I'm not. <laughs> I just I just sit back and listen and watch and see, wow, their, their life is so full of drama. <laughs> and sadness and stuff. They need they need an Elizabeth, you know. I love that. Oh, I love that. Wayne, you know what's so wild about that is that's a choice. It is a choice. It sure is. It it is. And you don't have to have something manifested to be an Elizabeth. Some people are the are mamas. Like I, I share with you all one time about um, mother. Mother Whitney, Mother Whitney would just sit in the chair and you would go, she's an elder and, and you just go in there and just be in her presence. That's what she was birthing, mm -hmm. love. She was just pure love. So we have different ways of what we are pregnant and what we are to bring to the world. Some people hold the space. Mother Whitney held the space for us. That's what some of us are doing. We're not to be out there shoveling and writing and all that. Just hold the space of love. And she would have, you know, children that she would come bring in that were lost and all that kind of stuff. She held the space. So, you, you know, you are, are invited. If you just go to Elizabeth. Dot, no, Elizabeth Visionary Conference dot org and get more. Okay. And then the next one, we have to have you be a speaker. How about that? I love to. <laughs> I was, like I said, I just, I'm just so thankful. Lolly even thought to consider me. So mm -hmm. Thank you. You are true. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, truthfully, I have been struggling to figure out who was who I could bring on this platform um, because I I take it seriously. Um, you know, everyone has a potential to be an Elizabeth, mm -hmm. but not everyone is currently in the life state of an Elizabeth. <laughs> well said. And so I'm just, I, I was, I was figuring it out, thinking real hard about it. And usually it's difficult for me to think about it, but I really had to sit and say like, who in my life currently 
is just really showing this true passion and purpose within their lives, who is who is impacting the people around them in such a, such a positive and uplifting way, who is really doing the work. And just immediately, you th I thought of you and I was like, oh yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I'm, I'm really, 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 really happy that you could make it. It just, <laughs> it, it's so beautiful. I appreciate it so, so much. And, um, Going to what Queen Adunia mentioned before, you know, when she said, I trust you, you know, trust is something that we take seriously in the black community because there's a lot of reasons to distrust people and we've been giving them all. Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, yeah. but it's just, it's beautiful that, that we are able to, you know, feel that Elizabeth in you and feel that connection, feel that, that truth and that, that you're carrying on that torch to really guide us and push us us as a community so I think that's so beautiful um and I know mama head has something to say before I before I before I give it to you mama head I also want to say that I've been watching mama head this whole time and she's been <laughs> holding it in but you're not trying to do anything you are doing it um so <laughs> <laughs> just just so you know we do squeezes every time we say that word every time we use the try word we squeeze but we we are doing it and you are doing it so i appreciate you mm -hmm. mama head thank you thank you lolly for being a, a disciple of the yt yrt word I'm spelling <laughs> it because we're not supposed to spell it. oh and if, and if we use the black english version that's going to be 15 squeezes so add that to your repertoire <laughs> okay so what I wanted to say, Lolly, I'm so glad you spoke about that. Um, get you know the people who we call on to to be um, disciples, if you will, or excuse me, Elizabeth, if you will. I have a sister that I've asked to be on, and she quite she says she didn't understand what it was. So I've given her the links and everything, told her to check out the um, archives and whatnot. But, you know, I look at her, she's a very dynamic sister. She's created jewelry that is just out of this world. Like it's not little, you know, her stuff is big and gaudy and just loud, you know, mm -hmm. and then she redid her kitchen and now she's an adventurous. She's got one of those three wheel trikes and she had it uh, decorated and she got a matching outfit. And I'm like, why don't you look like an Elizabeth? You know, she said, I'm shy. I said, this is a, we sitting at the table drinking coffee. We just, we talking, <laughs> Share your journey, you know, and I can't make her, but she reached back out and said, you know, I'm shy. I said, I figured that I said, I'm shy, but her, my shy don't, don't matter to her. It's that she's shy, but that's all right. I let her know that I see her mm -hmm. and that's all that I need to do is plant that mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And it's very tiny. I went to a service. And the preacher gave every I didn't I had no idea that that seed was that doggone smile and so powerful. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is plant or drop a ripple in the water and watch the waves go. Mm -hmm. so they gonna come back eventually. Yeah. They are gonna hit other stuff and go other directions. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't worry about where they're going. Don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about that. Just make sure you <laughs> drop the drip. Drop the drip. I'm done. Thank you. I'm complete. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, so just why don't we take a moment and everyone kind of chime in on a one word what you're getting out of all of this or or a sentence or whatever whatever you beautiful queen you beautiful princesses you beautiful oh, goddesses you, you know what Queen, I'm going to share. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest thing within our platform is the fact that we are sharing. We are sharing. We're sharing ourselves. We're sharing full authentic, um, authenticity, authenticity, authentic, blah, 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 blah. authentic, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. authenticity, yeah, authenticity of ourselves. And we show up, some of us, we show up every day on here on the Zoom. And so we have this great big baby that is coming in six weeks. Mm -hmm. And the same vulnerability that we share as our sisterhood here, y'all already know where I'm going with this. We need to be sharing with the world, sharing. Yes. <laughs> um, last night I had the perfect opportunity of being with women in tech. I didn't know what I was stepping into. 
I walked into a place called Spotlight on the east side of Detroit. That place is magical and vibrational and wonderful. And I shared myself with probably 12 women I've never met before. Do you know I got 12 contacts? Do you know HMA Village? One of them are ready to come pregnant to our conference just because I opened myself up and opened my mouth and shared it with people I've never, I've never known. So we're in crunch time. That means we should be posting that poster. We should be creating our own content because we want this thing to be spectacular. And I think also want to, we also want to make some money too, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm just saying. So my thing is, you know, we're sharing here. We need to take that share shareability to other people. That's all. Right. right. So share. I'm going to say share. Mm -hmm. Share. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I tell you, I tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. <laughs> when we take these sisters all the way through, me too, because I'm I'm going to, I'm birthing something. I might have, quad, let's see, what is the eight? Octuplet. Eight babies. You have oh, octuplet. Oh. <laughs> When we take them and build up, because they're going to build, we're going to build up all, all the way to the end. In the end, we know that. Mm, when Reverend Omani get to clearing all of us, the sisters that are going to be there, clearing us so that we can have the baby. You know how you get ready to have the baby when they prep you? And they clean out everything around where the baby's going to come out and stuff. And they get it all sanctified and purified. How they about the nesting? Their stuff on, you know, so that if they with whatever they touch, all the nurses and the doctors, everybody come in and the doctor come in. She's ready to do her thing. That's the Holy Spirit. Come on in. And then Danny's going to say, push. And set the tone for the push. And you know how you have to, and the, well, who's the, the husband is there saying, okay, baby, you okay, push this, you okay, okay, okay. And she's squeezing his hand and hitting him and stuff, you know. <laughs> Tell you that's what's going to happen. And I know that each of you who are speaking you know, is, is, is able, willing, listening, seeing. This is how I'm talking about now. What is going to what is needed to take these women who will birth the babies? I see it when when um, Aunt Bridget gets through creating the atmosphere, all white room representing cleanliness coming in there. And we'll have all white on. Can you see this? We'll have all, everybody will be in white, ready to put their feet up to the stirrup. You know what I mean? You know, okay, it's time to push. It's time to push now. It's time to push. And, uh, okay, you still got some forgiveness there? I forgive them. I forgive them. Push! <laughs> God, God, I believe you. I believe you. Push! <laughs> all right now <laughs> like when, she, when she did with me and she said the first one that i went to her uh, one of her um retreats and i was on the floor and she was like god says say yes yes <laughs> yes it wants a yes out of you yes yes <laughs> Hey Queen, you got a good example behind you on the wall. You are you do you remember you got you got your birthing position over there on the wall and some of us want to squat. <laughs> Mama head want to squat. I want to squat. <laughs> I want to dance, okay? Okay. You gonna dance it I out. I want to be stagnant. That's that baby y'all. <laughs> I want to float. I need a tub. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, we have different birthing styles. That's what's so beautiful about the creator that yes. we all kind of way. You might want to be on all fours, you know, right. however mm -hmm. you get your baby out. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. get it out. Mm -hmm. You might want to shout it out. <laughs> mm 
Mm -hmm. I got a quick question. I'm sorry. Yes. On the business side, um, with the conference, because I was listening to Danielle, but with the conference, is everybody who was speaking, performing, dancing, are they being asked um, to also promote? Because something that, and I'm just sharing this, because something we had to learn through Juneteenth and, and organizing is that like, if we're going to pay you to be there, or even if we're giving you a platform, we're going to ask for something in return, especially with promotion. Because one thing about Detroit is that it's a lot of silos. And if you're not a part of that person's silo, you don't reach that audience. Mm -hmm. so, Great. Yeah. So I just wanted to say, like, to Danielle's point, and, and you know, even just because we don't think about it all the time when we are organizing and doing things of that nature, because we hope. But sometimes you can't hope. You got to make it a requirement. So, um, and also I sent a couple of emails to Lolly. Um, and I, I'll send it to you, Daniel. I don't know who's working on promotions. But even still, with that being a little over a month away, I just wanted to share that because, again, we, we tend to think that people will do yeah. the right thing. But um, like y'all asked me earlier about accountability, that's one way you can't actually implement accountability you know so mm -hmm. yeah and that's a good a great question and a great um piece of information i just well, put the have, link we have done as we have every single person every speaker has a flyer with just them on there so that they send it out because it's they're on there they are on there to send it out to promote. What I find is if they're not on there, they don't they don't do as much. And and if they're on there, they don't do as much unless you set it up and like you said, require that you do that. And Danielle's doing an excellent job. I sometimes have to pull her back because she's ready to beat people up. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> Everybody got their gifts. You can't, you can't do that. You can't tell people they can't. I don't want to see. I don't want to see another flyer about somebody else's stuff. And you ain't putting that. Da, 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 da. I said, you, know, you have to enroll them. I, I, I feel. I feel just that strongly. I'm like, we. I see people posting everything, especially in our group chat about everything else, but they ain't post one Elizabeth flyer on their on their Facebook page. Like, okay, just, make sure, just know that sometimes you don't see everybody's algorithm either, be based on things that are being shown. So you could miss things, but let's yeah. make sure we do post. Cause I know That's I was typing up a nice large story today and I hit, you know, I went to queen to ask her a question. And when I went back, that joke, that joker disappeared. I said, let me type it in a note. So when I go back and forth, I don't lose my, my story that I wrote. Cause I was, I was, I was happy about it, but thankfully it came from in here and I can do it again. Cause I had a real nice write up going, you know, even talking about the, the, um, the, I asked her for the, for the, uh, verse. And when I went back that second blink, I was like, no, I had typed the whole paragraph. So I got to get back to work on that. You know. Let me speak to something else. Um, some people are, on, are, are not on social media. And some people have this, I don't do this and I don't do that and all this, that kind of stuff. You got to put all that crap aside. We are only as strong as our weakest link. You got to know that. And when you're not doing your, your share because of I don't do, or I've never done, or I'm scared, then that that is affecting your personal business and your mm -hmm. personal ministry and your personal purpose for being here. You will need other people to believe in what you're doing. And you will want them to do that. You're going to get what you're putting out. So just jump in. It's more than just us being here. This is wonderful. We are a family and such. But you got to reach out. And like I said, if you like this, don't you think you're Elizabeth? Do you have Elizabeth in your life? Are they doing, they waiting on you to just ask them? And if you're not on social media, okay, we give that. If you're not on social media, then make them calls one-on-one. -on -one. Social media wasn't here 30 years ago. 
We had to call. We had to pass out flyers. We had to do all of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, that's 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 all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. No more excuses. Cut that crap. It's not going to get you anywhere. Not anywhere. So we want all of our businesses, all of our ministries, all of our uh, talents, all of our, uh, what do you call it? Um, um, so that's not, that's not a, that's not a business. That's a, a hobbies. We want them all to flourish. So the best thing to do is to support someone else, especially when it's something that you are part of. I know all of us have a lots of Elizabeths in our lives. I just met a new one today. Sharia. And what's the other sister's name? Yep. Susan. Susan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I like that. I mean, and again, I don't know if you're using that, but I think that's a great pitch. Like, do you have an Elizabeth in your life? If so, bring her to the conference. You got to use all that knowledge. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, explain what an Elizabeth is too, but I think that's a dope invitation. Like, you are my Elizabeth. I know I'm yours. Exactly. I know. I know. And I do say, I don't care. I don't care who it is. I don't care what color they are. If I'm talking about Elizabeth, I tell them, I say, you're Elizabeth. I'm standing here talking to you about your baby. And then I just throw my head. And I know I'm Elizabeth. I know I caused your baby to leap. I caused that because I am the embodiment of Elizabeth. You are too. So speak from that. Speak from what they're going to get out of it. Yes. Wherever your baby is, it's going to go, uh, you know, no matter where. My, I have a 44-year-old baby. Everest Natural Beauty School. The people that I have met in this circle right here are helping. I got Dr. Nicole over there helping now. You know, she's joined our team and stuff. So we are, um, we are Elizabeth. We're going to make a song, y'all. We got to make a song, Lolly. Oh, that's cool. We got to write a song. Oh, that's song. Go that's ahead, Lolly, and toot play. us up a song. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's my strong suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. I, so I do want to say for that, that, um, that boost. Would yes, you, it's, it's some it's some babies leaping right now. Mm. Um, I see it. So <laughs> shout out to Elizabeth and also shout out to um Black, what is it, Black Leaders Detroit? Mm -hmm. Yes, and shout out to June Team Jubilee Detroit. Um that is just gonna be amazing, you know, a little convicted because I can do even I, I'll be sharing in my stories, you feel me, but I need to do more more hyping it up, both everything. Mm -hmm. So no worries. We we get in there. We get in there. Listen, I'm listening. Um, <laughs> but yes, let's definitely uplift each other with sharing. Um, and and I think one way to outwardly show outside of this call, as everyone has been mentioning, outside of this call, one way to show that our babies are leaping and we are, you know, ready to to be there to, you know, encourage someone else's baby to leap and let them have that feeling. We can show it. We can show it through sharing and uplifting other businesses and organizations, especially those who have come here to talk to us. So definitely, um, I wanted to say in the chat, Susan had dropped a volunteer link um, for Juneteenth mm -hmm. um, in here. Hold on, let me copy it and paste it again. Just in case you were interested in volunteering in some way, um, there's a lot of beautiful events happening that weekend as well. Um, I know that's after our conference, so we'll have we should have enough energy <laughs> for that. Um, but I'm I'm really excited. Maybe we'll we'll see some people at the conference there and there at the conference and all of that. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And yeah, I'll I'll put the flyer in our group chat too. Yeah, yeah. It would be great, um, Sharia, if you all your company was able to come and be a, uh one of the um well a sponsor, uh, absolutely, but definitely a um a vendor, because I'm not just looking for vendors that have stuff to sell. 
I'm looking for people to come that have that can that when I'm pregnant now what do I do that kind of information going going forth and so if you want to um your organization would like to be a vendor call me you know get in contact with Lolly and talk to me and let's see what we can create because um Vendor, I mean, the, the babies come now. You got to support them, you got to pay for them, you got to register them, you got to all that stuff. And if we can direct somebody to someone, that would be awesome. They got to be nurtured. <laughs> and Absolutely. I, I love that opportunity. Thank you. Also, mm -hmm. I was just trying to register, so you can't pay at the moment, or like, do you get an email about the payment? Oh, Are you, uh, are you registering for the conference or, or mm -hmm. the conference? Mm -hmm. That's, That's not what I'm talking about. Yes. And then Mama Head, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, my giveaway that came out of this, that, that's being birthed out of this at the end of my um, presentation is a four-hour social media boot camp and a 12-week oh. boot, 12 -week boot camp. So when you said Sergeant of Arms, I was like, oh, I'm right on I'm right on the board with the uh the uh the the militariness of it all. And we I gotta be gangster. We gotta huh? be gangster. We have to be gangster. We've 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 had too many lessons on how people are gangsterism with guns and, and other things. We need to learn from some of that and be gangster on that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. I get it. Because you you the fire under my pot. <laughs> I'm doing stuff that I wouldn't be doing if I wouldn't be hanging with you. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes because this place, this this Elizabeth thing for me is therapy. Uh, when I leave out of here, then I got to go back. You know, I, I don't want to keep separating my places and car compartmentalizing them because I need to blend it in. You know, when I'm done here, then I got to go back to oh my dad's business. Mm -hmm. I need to I got to do this because this is going to help this work better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate what you're, you know, how you're attacking us gently. <laughs> I'm done being gentle. I am. And it's funny. I went to a, an event last night and met a woman, Rosa. I love how the, uh, what is it? Networking is happening here. Cause Rosa sent me um, a client to do their logo for her event on May 7th. I get to the event, the woman comes up to me and I'm looking at her. She's like, I know you. It's like, I know you too. It's a woman who I offered social media service to a year ago at the Spirit of Detroit at the Trap Yoga event. And in her phone, she saved me as Danielle. Um, met at the spirit, met at the met at the spirit belly dancer slash social media. That's how she had me saved on her phone. I was like, oh my. God, it's in my Insta stories and I'm going to make a post about it. I was like, oh my God, okay, it's meant to be. It's just meant, meant to be like, okay, Elizabeth, like we're, we're showing we're showing up and Rosa has really been, she's stepping into that little Elizabeth role like, whoa, okay, um, we're working together. But it's it uplift and help each other because if we all, if we all are great, you know what I'm saying? I want us all to be on the beach of Jamaica wearing white and drinking, you know, Mai Tais or penny coladas and you know having us having a good time I want us all to be there but we all gotta step up to you know we gotta step up to that level yeah and I'm happy mm -hmm. I like what I see like from all of you I like what I see a few days ago I saw Ebony post and I was like go Ebony she was from face game beauty and she was promoting um the association that she was at like like I said I'd be watching people mama had I have people come to me with the, the five rights that you was doing how can I get about that? Where can I find a recorder? I was like, go go check out Mama Head. That's Mama Head. We, you know, um, like I said, my Latani guys, my friend Latani said, closed mouths don't get fed. And if we are hungry, we gotta open up our mouths mm -hmm. <laughs> to get fed. So yeah, that that that's how I feel about that. Thank you. Yes. Did you find it, Sharia? Did you find it? Where I can pay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just walk through it. If you okay. on on the let me let me let me let me let me let me let me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm clicking on register now, and it says thank you for your interest. We're not able to accept online payments at the moment. Please hmm. contact us directly. Okay, this purpose. right here. Okay, if you're registering for the conference, I'm gonna go back to 
Okay, right here. This is where you pit you clicked. Yep. Okay. I click there and then I typed in my information. Uh-huh. And then click because you have to select the item, right? Okay, let me see here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna do the two day, okay. Register now. See? Whoa. Why is that? Yeah, some moment, please contact us directly to complete your okay. Belanda sent me this as well. She was registering for for a vendor. Okay, I'll check it out. Okay. We'll, we'll let you know, babe. We'll Thank you, you, Sharia. That is that is so beautiful. I'm glad you were so uh willing to just, you know, jump in right away and that allowed us to see you know what we need to do. So thank you so much, Elizabeth. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we'll definitely take care of that. And so we're going to, the, the person who is responsible for the first three registrations, we're going to give you something special. Because <laughs> in there, in there, uh, Sharia, there's a, who, who, who told you about it? So of course it would be Lolly. So Lolly gets a blessing from that, a financial blessing as oh. well. Yeah, it's like the affiliate program. She gets a, a actually in between just a, a, us, it's twenty five dollars that goes towards her because we're not we're not just um, we're not just it's not like my organization. I'm gonna have the money. It's all of us, and so there's a way for all of us to be blessed by the work that we all do together. And then there'll be enough left to put in the pot for the next event or to be able to bless. And we've adopted two organizations, one being the um, Malik Yakinis, you know, the food and be able to help people have food, the gardening and stuff. And then the other is um, Mama Shu and helping that organization for the community and for Highland Park. So some monies will go towards them as well. So yep, Malik is one of our members. So definitely yeah. familiar with Malik. Absolutely, absolutely. So um yeah. So thank you for sharing everything. You've been such a a, a blessing to us today. Such thank you for having me. I truly, truly appreciate it. And like mm -hmm. I said, you all just don't understand this how good it was to start the morning off with you all. And again, Lolly, I truly appreciate you for even considering me and, and thinking highly of me. So, so I think the world of you and everybody else on the committee as well, just the work that you all are doing individually and collectively. So thank you all again. And Queen, I don't take trust lightly either. So if you want me to look at any other kinks, suggestions, whatever, I got you. You know, like, no, you, everybody on this call, whatever I can do to help or guide or share, whatever. That So don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for being Black. <laughs> Since that's what propelled you to do everything you're doing, Ooh. is being Black, because you can't change that. So I know that's the rest of your okay. life. <laughs> if, it ain't no, if it ain't no other inspiration, let your blackness be your inspiration. Black and spiritual. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yes. That's a t-shirt right there, Danny. That's, That's right. All your tools. I'm black and spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Andy is. Have we, a wonderful weekend. As we hugging, I want to say thank you for that intro today. That was that was something. That was something. That that <laughs> intro. Y'all all three of y'all preaching today. Yeah. I was preaching today, all three y'all. Okay. All right. All three y'all. Hug the world. Hug the whole wide world because you know they need it. And then sprinkle all the goodness of love and peace and prosperity and, and health and all wealth and, 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 and forgiveness and all yum 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 yum. I love you. Thank y'all.